Hey, what's going on, folks? This is Larry with Half Big Sports. Um, I got three topics I want to get into today, so I'm not going to waste your time. I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, first of all, let's talk about Philadelphia and the NFC East, but, you know, staying with Philadelphia. Um, I think Carson Wentz has been folding under the pressure as of lately. You know, I don't know if it's the big contract or, you know, if they got Jalen Hurts sitting there looking over his shoulder, who kind of needs to be starting, in my opinion, because instead of instead of Philly using him like New Orleans is using Taysom Hill, you know, some kind of gadget back or, you know, trick play specialist, you know, you really, you know, you're really wasting Jalen Hurts' talent. Um, I've spoken on this guy, you know, Jalen Hurts and his talent. And I know that, you know, college resumes, college success doesn't always translate to the pros. But, you know, judging judging Carson Wentz and, you know, his lack of confidence right now, I think it wouldn't hurt to, you know, give Jalen Hurts a start or two to at least see what you have. I mean, you know, the only person is going to, you know, the only person that might, you know, be in a little trouble behind that is if, if Jalen Hurts gets in here and, you know, has a little success. You're going to be kind of wondering why, you know, you paid Carson Wentz all that money in the offseason. Um, I'll tell you what, I, you know, I'm kind of shocked at it because, you know, yeah, I gave Carson Wentz a chance. He kind of, you know, I was kind of impressed with him his first couple of years. But now, like, yeah, you know, it seems like he's looking over his shoulder. He's, you know, he doesn't have any confidence. You know, I don't know if it's his offensive line. But right now, you know, with everything going on in Philly, I think it's time to, you know, maybe you might want to sit sit Carson down for a bit, you know, and let Jalen get a start or two, at least to see what you have. Um, you know, it can't hurt. Only person that can't hurt is the GM because, you know, if Jalen Hurts ends up being the guy, you pay Carson, you know, you pay Carson Wentz all that money in the offseason, somebody's going to have to eat that, and we all know what happens then. It's the GM. Um... Second thing I want to get into, I want to talk about my buddy Cam Newton, who I was really pulling for, and I was really, I was really happy he ended up in New England. But right now, that's kind of looking like might be a bust of a situation. Um, really can't put that all on Cam because New England doesn't have any, you know, he doesn't have any weapons to throw to on the outside. So how much of that is on Cam Newton? I really can't say. Um, I kind of, you know, I kind of feel like, you know, unless, the, you know, when the offseason comes up, maybe they need to, you know, maybe maybe they should get some receivers. Or, I tell you what, the reason I say Cam might be looking for a job next season is because Trevor Lawrence is going to be sitting there somewhere in the draft. And with New England's record as of now, um, Trevor Lawrence could end up falling to him. So... If Trevor Lawrence from Clemson, you know, the, the golden boy, you know, sunshine is my brother calls him. And, you know, I mean, he's pretty much, the, you know, he's pretty much going to win the Heisman this year. And everybody knows he's going to be the number one draft pick. So with him saying that he doesn't want to go to the Jets, um, I kind of feel like, you know, Trevor Lawrence might end up falling to New England. And if Trevor Lawrence happens to fall to New England, it's going to be bad news for Cam. They'll keep Cam for another season, but I really, you know, I really can't see him staying there more than a year or two if, if you know, if they end up drafting Trevor Lawrence. Um, a third, third topic, kind of one of my favorites. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about my team here for a minute, but, you know, bear with me. Is Pittsburgh not the, is Pittsburgh like the quietest 11-0 team, you, you know, you've seen right now? Um. You know, cause, you know, it seems to me like if New England wins six, seven games, we automatically start talking about, oh, they're going to go undefeated. So with Pittsburgh winning 11 games, nobody's really, you know, <laughs> nobody's really saying, oh, they're going to go undefeated. Oh, you know, they're going to, you know, they're going to run, you know, going to be the you know, perfect season. Um, here's the thing. The reason they're quiet at 11 and 0 is because we all know Pittsburgh isn't going to, you know they're not gonna they're not gonna go undefeated. Let me let me just say that. You know, as a fan, it kills me to say, but hey, I gotta be realistic. If anybody watched that Ravens game yesterday, that game should not have been as close as it was. 
They got, Baltimore could have legitimately won that game. Um, it, you know, to me, Pittsburgh always, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you other Steelers fans and maybe just football fans in general, y'all might see it. You know, Pittsburgh kind of plays down to the competition a lot. And the next couple of games, let's see, they got Washington. You know, Washington has a Washington has a good defensive line. So they could, you know, they could possibly, you know, put some pressure on Big Ben. That offense might not get to rolling. Um, Sensi and, you know, Sensi, well, you know, it's kind of, I kind of feel bad for Sensi. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to knock Sensi too much because they did lose their quarterback. And I hope Joey Burrow comes back next season and, you know, lights it up. You know, it's sad what happened to him. Um, Cleveland, see, there's a, there's a trap game for Pittsburgh. We all know Cleveland gets up to play Pittsburgh like no like nobody I've ever seen. And we got the Bills and the Colts. So right now, I see two I see possibly two losses out of these four. So don't get mad at me, Pittsburgh. It's you know, I watch the same team you do. And like I said, Washington can give us some trouble. Since he not so much, but Cleveland, the Bills, and, you know, even the Colts. I mean, you know, Phillip Rivers isn't exactly washed up. So, you know, you know, like I said, they, you know, out of those four games, I say that there's two that they could possibly lose. So, you know, like I said, we'll just have to see. But, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much with everybody. I, I, think, I think that 11-0 is a good, a good silent in 11-0 for Pittsburgh. So, um We'll just, you know, we'll just leave it there and see what, you know, see what happens, you know, these last four games. If they end up getting the season finished with all this COVID going around, who knows, you know, they might end up just playing two more games and have to shut the season down. And, you know, we hope that doesn't happen. Um, hey, folks, that's all I got for today. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, like I said, you can get with us at Half Big Sports on YouTube. You know, any kind of, you know, any suggestions, any topics. Um Next week, I want to kind of talk about some Hall of Fame picks because have you guys seen the Hall of Fame list? I kind of think, you know, I kind of want to do a little thing where I pick, where I, where I give my picks for the, you know, for the automatic first round, you know, first ballot Hall of Fame picks coming up. Um, like I said, guys, that's all I got for right now. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you.